Welcome back to Landmarks Discovered. In this episode, we'll visit one of Palm Beach's oldest institutions, Palm Beach Day Academy. This year, Palm Beach Day Academy celebrates its 100th anniversary. And to mark that milestone, they created a timeline which I think really reflects how the school evolved to meet the needs of the community. Yes, originally it was two schools. There was the Palm Beach School for Girls and the Palm Beach School for Boys. And in one of our past episodes, we introduced you to Ada Davis, who was the head of the Palm Beach School for Girls when she commissioned Belford Shoemate to build 162 Peruvian. And I think when the, those two schools merged in 1931, which led to the building of the historic landmark that we know today by Wyeth, that there were many other influential individuals involved. Yes. So when Wyeth was commissioned to build the school in the 30s, he was really commissioned by a lot of his colleagues who he's already built houses for, like Alfred Kay and the Shaughnessy's. And Marion Sims Wyeth also worked very frequently with Marjorie Merriweather Post and E.F. Hutton. He worked with them on their first home on the island, Hogarcito, which is located on Gulfview Road, and actually developed pretty much the whole street for them as part of the Gulfview Road Development Company. And what's interesting about choosing Wyeth is he was actually here in the community, so his children needed a school to go to. And you can see that Alice Wyeth was the captain of the Pelicans on the first field day. The founders of Palm Beach Day Academy purchased land from the Poinciana Park Development Company, which was owned by Oscar Josie, who platted the sea streets. So it's interesting to note that they chose land where our school was already existing and how they really distinguished them was in the architectural style. They commissioned Marion Sims Wyeth to build the school in 1931 and he chose the Art Deco style, which is simple, clean lines in a modern design. Not only did the style distinguish Palm Beach Private School from Palm Beach Public, it also signified a sense of optimism that even though the community was in the height of the Depression, brighter times and brighter days were ahead. Why this design for the school was one of the earliest examples of Art Deco on the island. We can see many other buildings and institutions, for that matter, in the style on the other side of the bridge in West Palm Beach, but really there are very few that I can think of here in Palm Beach. You know, it is really early. It was built in 1931, and it was definitely one of Wyeth's first ventures into Art Deco. And you can see that most of the building has simple lines, but the entryway is very detailed in the Art Deco fashion. So as you're walking up to the school, you can see the fluted pilasters that lead up to the town's emblem, which is an eagle in a very Art Deco style, and the boss relief above the doorway, which has another Art Deco design along with the name of the school. And Wyeth really did intricate drawings for this entryway, including the raw iron details on the doorway. It was important for the parents who were coming down here for the winter that their children be able to continue their education and also enjoy the outdoors. One of the, my favorite things that I came across during research for this episode was an original informational brochure for the school, which said, quote, a long midday break is given to allow time for ocean bathing, luncheon, and rest. And one of our foundation members who supports our education program recalls coming to visit her grandfather who commissioned El Marisol 
going to Palm Beach Day Academy and then leaving at noon and going to swim and rest at the Bath and Tennis Club and then returning for classes around 2.30. The Preservation Foundation has been in partnership with Palm Beach Day Academy since 1987 when we started our pilot heritage education program there, which is still running today with the fourth graders. As part of heritage education, the Preservation Foundation sends a staff member with a background in architecture and preservation into the fourth grade classrooms at Palm Beach Day Academy to learn about the history of the island through the built environment. As part of the program, students learn how to read parts of a building and also to identify architectural styles and their related features. And a beloved part of that program is the paper house kits that the students build that depict three styles of Palm Beach architecture. And you can really see how excited they are to build these houses and present them to the class. And as a whole, I think the program really imparts a sense of community identity and civic pride. For students who grew up here on the island, they establish a greater connection to their built environment. And for those students who are newer to town, they create a personal connection to their surroundings. The Preservation Foundation of Palm Beach is fortunate to enjoy a long-standing relationship with Palm Beach Day Academy. For this episode, we had the opportunity to sit down with Head of School Fanning Heron to talk about the school's importance as a leading institution in the community. Now as we complete 100 years um, and we look at the next uh, century ahead of us to, to be at a, at, a, at a really nice peak moment. Um, you know, have gone from a, a handful of students in 1921 in someone's backyard running around uh, to 550 students on two campuses. We have our campus here in, in Palm Beach and we have our lower school campus over on South Flagler Drive in West Palm Beach. So and that's a beautiful facility as well. Um, this really sort of, I, I call this the historical center of the school and then this wonderful um, uh, facility um, in West Palm. When you do come down Seaview Avenue, you know, you can tell it's the sparkling gem of a facility. Um, I think we're doing a great job with the upkeep, recently painted it. Um, we're gonna do some um, more work um, over the summer on the roof and, and some of the steel beams, you know, and really try to maintain and preserve the legacy of Marion Sims Wyeth here in town. Um, and it's just a, it's a fantastic facility. It's kind of quirky. Um, it doesn't have these, you know, big classrooms, and we really try to focus on small class size, so um, that works in our favor. Um, but we've done some really unique things. For example, we're sitting in this library right now, completely renovated space, um, thanks to the generosity of our parents. We keep on trying to do what we can to maintain and, and preserve the architectural sort of heritage and, 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 uh, and the beauty of it, but also trying to add a little bit of a modern flair. And I think over time we will do that. We're gonna try to make some renovations to the cafeteria make renovations to the Goodman Science Center. Um, we are going to always maintain the facility um, as best we can, but just over time really just keep renovating. And what I love about it is they did such a good job of preserving the original structure of the building yet adding on because if you're walking around the school, you may not notice the theater. You have to go in the theater. And once, again, as somebody who has done a number of tours and, and welcomed a number of new families to the, to the building, you walk into the Matthew Center of Performing Arts, you walk into the, um, the theater, and uh, you're just instantly uh, impressed. You've got to have strong schools to have a strong uh, community. Thanks to the support of the Palm Beach Day Academy parent body, um, you know, managed very efficiently um, by a very, very supportive board of trustees. So, you know, I think the growth of Palm Beach Day Academy obviously reflects you know, what's happening in town. Um, but it's just, I always say that certainly at independent schools, you know, everything is about relationships. Everything that happens here is about the student teacher relationship. That, that's the basis of everything we do. And it's one of the reasons I think we've been so successful, but there's an outgrowth of that theory in that, you know, a, I think another reason why we've been so successful is that we just have good relationships with the town. Field day is, is, is certainly unique. It's certainly our, our, our most prized tradition, our most storied uh, tradition. Um, and it's amazing to see the kids get so excited about it. I've been a part of a number of schools that have field days. It's, it's sort of a traditional um, 
or, or uh, kind of an ordinary sort of placeholder in, in most elementary and, and middle schools, you have a field day. But no one has a field day like Palm Beach Day Academy. <laughs> Started in 1931, it's just an incredible uh, display of uh, school pride, um, enthusiasm, uh, sportsmanship, um, and there's always that competitive flair between the Pelicans and Flamingos, which is really fun to see. We, we say here, um, we're all Bulldogs, but then there's that there's a house divided a little bit. You're either a pelican or a flamingo, and, and um, you are you are hatched as a pelican or flamingo upon enrollment at the school. We have a hatching ceremony, which is a big part of it. And so, when you uh, are a new student, you you are um, hatched um, as a as a pelican or flamingo, and then um, that all leads up to field day, um, where the pelicans take on the flamingos and and buy for. Um, you know, bragging rights on, on, on the school. But it's fun because we can do um, like social and, and, and fun events throughout the year, but it all culminates in this big, big day. Um, and it's, it's really just a celebration of the school. It's a celebration of the history of the school. Primary, um, elementary and, and middle school education would be, um, it's all about sort of joyful academics. You know, and what I love about our mission is that we focus on academic excellence in a compassion-rich environment, which is just, to me, one of the um, most unique missions um, I've seen in independent schools because very few schools have the word compassion in their mission. And it speaks so um, broadly to what we do here um, because we support these kids. The beauty of academic excellence with a compassion-rich environment is that we're gonna push you um, horrible pun, you know, we're going to push you, but if you fall down, we're going to pick you up and, and brush you off and like, let's get, you know, get back up on it. Um, so the joyful academic piece to me is so important. Um, and our unofficial motto, um, is, is something we, we stole from Mr. Ralph Greco, this legendary faculty member here who kind of coined the term work hard, be kind, which is so sweet. And again, that kind of, it, it works really hard. It, it fits perfectly, um, with our mission. Um, and with this like personal philosophy of joyful academics, because, you know, whether in your first grade or eighth grade, um, you're learning, but you still want it to be somewhat enjoyable. You know, we're certainly not about churning out uh, stressed out kids. You know, I think our kids uh, graduate from here very confident, um, uh, very prepared. We get that feedback from all the high schools. Palm Beach Day Academy's centennial is an important milestone in the school's history, and we're excited to help celebrate with this episode of Landmarks Discovered. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to check out our website at palmbeachpreservation.org to stream past episodes. Join us each month for new episodes as we explore more landmarks in the town of Palm Beach.